Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be turning our DSLR into a webcam in Linux. So let's get started. Some of you may already know that I recently started streaming on Twitch, which I'll leave a link right here also down in the description below. And on that stream, I usually do behind the scenes of Linux or a lot of Linux operations. So basically what you see here and behind the scenes, you're gonna catch it on my channel. Now while doing so, I actually ran into a couple of problems because I'm running a full Linux setup as far as OBS and everything. And the little things that I found was to set up OBS with all the overlays and the chat boxes and the notifications and all that stuff. So if you actually join my stream now, you might still be able to catch those videos videos because I believe they leave them on archive for 14 days. Now the next problem I ran into was actually using a camera or good picture quality. I was using this Logitech C920 which is really good. I mean it provides pretty clear pictures but the colors were a slightly off but it worked. You know it does a 1080 video and everything and it worked fine. But if you're serious into streaming, you definitely want to upgrade yourself with an actual camera where you can actually change the lens, get better focus, get better lighting in here. It's basically a better setup. Now keep in mind that this is a DSLR and not a webcam. So there are going to be some steps into Linux just to get this working as a webcam. I do got to say that Canon did step up recently as of I think two weeks ago, they came out with a called Canon Webcam Beta, which allows you to actually use your DSLR as a webcam but unfortunately it's only for Windows. And another thing about that, it doesn't support this camera. This is an older T5i or 700D and it's not on their list of support. So even if I did format my computer to Windows just to use their drivers, I won't be able to use this camera. So that's a little plus side for using Linux, right? Anyway, let's begin. So to get started, we will be actually installing three programs which is Gphotos, V4L2 Loopback, and FFmpeg. So those are the utilities that you definitely need just to get this to work. And ha let me explain this a little bit. So Gphotos is the program that will actually detect your camera and use it as like a capture device. And then the, the V4L2 loopback will actually turn that video capture into a webcam. And then the FFmpeg is actually doing all the transcoding in between. So to begin, what we need to do is sudo apt install Gphoto2 v4l2 loopback util utils and ffmpeg now i already have this installed so it's just going to say i have the latest version now once you get those installed to test this out you would do sudo mod probe v4l2 loopback exclusive caps equals one max buffer equals two. Now, if there was no error that displays over here, that means it loaded the drivers perfectly fine. And that is good. That's a really good thing. Now, here's a list I'm going to show you, and I'll leave a link to the description down below. This website actually will show you the list of cameras that G photos will support. If your camera is listed here and the function like live view, that's good. That's all you really need. If it's not listed, then it's probably not going to work. Next step is to test out everything. Now you could do is gphoto2 dash dash auto dash detect. Now it's not gonna list anything because I didn't plug in my camera, but as soon as I do, which give me a second, and then I run that command again, now it sees my camera, which is the Canon EOS 700D, or in the States, it's actually T5i. Now here's the thing about this. If you have Magic Lantern installed, um, it's not gonna work. So you would have to remove the SD card. And what Magic Lantern is, it's a modified firmware for Canon so it could actually unlock more potential with the camera. But again, if you have that SD card in there and it's loading the Magic Lantern firmware, it's not gonna work over here. So just take out the SD card, retry it again, and it should work. So now that we detected the camera, we could actually test it out. So I'm gonna do gphoto2 dash dash capture image and download. So as soon as I hit this, it's actually gonna take a picture of whatever I'm looking at. So let me spin the camera over here so you kind of could see my face, I guess. And it's gonna try to autofocus, I believe, and I'm, I'm, I might be a little bit too close. Let me, let me see. You heard that? It just went click. Now, if I wanted to preview the picture, obviously I could just go over to my file and I think I captured it as this one. And there you have it. That's the camera and I was just, I guess, pointing at it and I definitely need a haircut. So yeah. All right, now that we know that it could actually capture a photo and it's detected, we could now move on to video. All right, so to do this, we would do gphoto2, 
I keep missing the two. S T D out, standard out, capture, because I don't want to see anything here. So capture movie, pipe that into FFmpeg, input dash, because I'm pulling it from uh, G photos, dash V codec, which is raw video, pix format, which we want U YUV 420p. And I think there's a 422p you could use. Threads zero F, the format that you want to output in V four L two, which is a webcam format, and then you want to pipe it over to Dev dash video slash video zero. Once you hit enter, it's gonna kick in, and it's gonna start encoding. So what I do over here now, just a view, I could go over to VLC Media Player. Okay and go over to capture device. So the downside to this is that there is a slight delay between the video capture device to the computer itself. And it's even slower on VLC. It's quicker if you actually use a webcam program like LBS or Zoom or whatever it is, it's much quicker. But on VLC, the delay is more significant. And the delay between OBS and the camera, anywhere between 500 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds, which one of my viewers on my stream instantly figured out. So yeah, okay. On the video device, you want to uh, choose dev slash video zero and then hit play. As soon as you hit play, that's the video itself. As you can see through the capture, I'm capturing this right here. So if I wanted to change it over to OBS or an actual video device, you just basically choose video zero. So I'll show you. If I go over to OBS, which I might already have set up, here you go. And the lag is much more uh, shorter or less significant than it was on VLC. Even though you could still see that there's a slight lag, the picture quality is there and you could see that there's like a little bit of a shallow depth of field in the back. The camera that I'm using, the lens that I'm using doesn't have that much of a shallow depth of field, but yeah, it, it all works. And now if you notice, since I'm using this as a webcam and not an HDMI capture device, I don't have that white square box in the middle that you would see normally for the focus. The last step is now that we tested everything, everything is working. We're going to turn this module so it will boot up automatically every single time. So to do this, what we need to do is sudo nano slash EDC modules. Now in here, you would actually give yourself an alias for this. I just called it DSLR webcam. You could call it DSLR or anything, whatever you want. I'm going to cancel out of this. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is sudo nano etc mod probe dot d and in here, you make a file called DSLR webcam, whatever we named it as before, .config. And in that file, you want to make the alias DSLR-webcam, and it's going to call for V4L2 loopback. And underneath that, you would call for the options, which we set up. And in here, you would do options V4L2 loopback, exclusive underscore caps equals one, and then max underscore buffers equals two. Once you have that all set, as soon as you reboot your computer, it's going to automatically load those modules so you don't have to keep typing mod probe v4 l2, you know, all that other stuff that I was typing in earlier. And then every time you want to start your webcam, you will have to do that gphotos2 with the ffmpeg string. So what you can do is actually set yourself up a little desktop icon or you can actually set yourself up a little script. You could do whatever you want to choose with that, but just keep in mind if you want to run your webcam, you need to use that little uh, command. And I will have a all right, so I'm re-recording this part because the part that I was mentioning, the creator of this guide, um, it didn't come out correctly. The video got corrupted somehow. So here it is. I'm actually going to put all the links down in the description below to all his uh, links, which is a medium post that he has, which I followed a couple of weeks ago just to get this going for my own stream. So I thought it was a really good video idea. And yeah, I basically used this guide. The credits to him. And yeah, back to the video. That is it guys. Um, the webcam is working as it should and you could see it worked in OBS. It also worked in VLC. It's also going to work in your chat clients like Zoom or anything like that. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If you do want to get fancy on FFmpeg and you get NVIDIA and all that stuff, you can actually offload the decoding into NVIDIA. So that works as well. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hearts.